you know, putting together a bulletin board, putting pendants and medallions on a bulletin board is a lot of fun. Here you go. Oh. Good golly, Miss Polly, these pendants are <laughs> neat. Say they are, are a lot of fun to make and to paint, and you know, they make good gifts too, Cece. Here's another one. This one looks like a precious stone. Who made it? Well, a uh, six-year-old boy made that. Isn't it beautiful? And he painted it that lovely emerald green, and I think that makes it look like a precious stone. Would you believe a five-year-old made this little Christmas tree? And if you put uh, green on it, it really looks like a Christmas medallion. Wow! This one really looks like a precious stone, Miss Polly. <laughs> yes, that is beautiful, isn't it? Um, artists made this. Uh, there's a city that has a lot of artists, and she lives there and makes these beautiful pendants. Look at that. The underside looks like clay. That's right. She takes some clay and models it and shapes it and molds it, and then she fires it. Fires it? What does that mean? Well, she puts it in a kill and gets it very, very hot. A kill's a lot like an oven. And after it gets very hot and then cools down, she takes it out, and the next thing she does is to take broken glass and put it back in the kill and melt the glass. And it makes that stone. Broken glass? I can sure help us with that. I'm always dropping my glass and how it does shatter. Oh, yes. I think Elsa would be happy to have you around. She tells me that she doesn't even get upset if someone breaks her very special, beautiful blue tumbler because she said, or any other color, you know. She says it makes more beautiful stone if it's real good glass. I wish I knew more about this. I need a gift for my girlfriend and cats don't make too much money. Well, I tell you what, Cece, why don't you do the same project, the same project we're going to do on Polly's paint box today? We're going to make pendants and medallions. Oh boy, you mean I can make one too? What will it be made of? It may be made of flour and salt. And that's why we're out here in the tool shed today. We're working out here because sometimes we spill the salt all over and it might spoil the studio floor. Well, let's you know, get with it, Miss Polly. Christmas isn't too far off, and my girlfriend would love a pendant. I bet she would. Well, we'll get started just as soon as Allison gets here. I see her coming now. Hello, Miss Polly. Hello, Allison. What do you have in the brown sack? Salt and flour. Of course. <laughs> well, hi there, Allison. Hi, Cece. Okay, Allison, pull up that chair while I take the flour out. Let's see. Here's the salt. Here's the measuring cup. Are you comfortable there? And the flour. All right, and have a bowl. All right, now, the recipe for this is very, very simple. Actually, it's in the teacher's guide in the Polly Paint Box um, manual. You take, let's put one cup of flour, okay? Let me put it down here and I'll let you dump it for me. I want one cup of flour. All There's right. already some in there. You can okay, see that. all right. Now, That's a lot of flour. One cup, all right, and half as much salt. So, just hold it right here. Let me get the salt open. If it's half as much salt, how much will it be? A half a cup. Very good. And be patient till it comes out. We'll measure a half a cup. All right. Now you pour it in with the flour. Good. Now, a half a cup of water. Shall I pour it in? Oh. Pour it in for me. Good. Then, this little tool is very, very handy. At, uh, it's made of plastic that looks kind of like an artist's palette. And I can stir in a round bowl with it. 
kind of mix that up until it begins to make a modeling dough. Sometimes we call it play dough, don't we? Because we play with it. Yeah. What else does it look like? Mm, I don't know. Biscuits? Mm. A little bit like biscuits. Yeah, a little mm. bit like biscuits. And it works kind of, if you've ever made cookies, works kind of the same way. All right, after I stir with that for a while, I'll just reach in with my hand. Let's do this. Let's move this out of the okay. way. Let me give you a okay. sign. Are you, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, put it right there. Now, let's move some of the things away. Now, let's mix it with our hands and if it sticks just a little bit, you can use flour. But you just use a little bit of flour. But I believe we got this just right. So I'm going to put it down. I'm going to flatten it. And try to think of a nice shape. I don't know what to Remember that all we used was flour and salt and water. And sometimes I add some white glue to it to make it very, very stiff. Here's your toothpick, if you want to use that for a tool. And here's a little thing that uh, might make a nice little design. Or you might even use the handle of a brush. We're going to make a hole first. Because remember, it has to be large enough after it's dry. Sometimes we even put these in the oven and cook them a little bit. And so that hole needs to be nice and large so we can put some yarn or some string. Now this little tool is a good idea. You can just go all the way around with it and oh, make wow. a design. Start. You're going to start all over with yeah. yours? Okay. That's another thing that's a lot of fun. You can do it more than once. And let's see. I could even put something in the middle. I might even put an A on there. Now let me show you another thing that would be kind of fun. This is a shell that I found. And I might even take a little bit of clay. Here's you another little bit if you want to make something else. And I might use that kind of like you would use a sand casting. That might be kind of fun. Let's see if it's got a little bit of flour in it. All right, now watch. I can take that little shell that I found and shove this down in here. Now, this doesn't always work. It may stick a little bit. So let's see if it works. After you get it in there, very gently lift it out. And we'll see if it made a design. See? Does that look a little bit like a shell? Mm-hmm. Here's another one that makes a beautiful design. Let's take a piece like this. And... I'll sort of shape it into a shell like this. All right. Now, of course, I need to have a hole in it. That's very important. So I'm using a toothpick. You might use a, a paintbrush handle. And I was looking around for different tools. And look, if I take this, that really looks like a shell, doesn't it? OK, Allison, let's look at yours. Oh, isn't that nice? Let me help you lift it up. Let me move it over here. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, so we can see it. Now, the next thing you do after you've made all these, we put them in a safe place and get them very, very dry. Let them dry naturally, or we can fire them. So I have some that are already dry. And when I say fire them, all I mean is that you can take it and you can put it in an oven. But you don't have to do that. Let me take some of these out, Allison, so okay. that our school artists can see how they look when they're dry. And you know what, Allison? Yeah. I'm going to let you help me paint some of these. Uh -huh. All right, let me get the paint. And Here's a hot <clears throat> Here you go, the paint. I do my heart. <laughs> oh, what a nice heart. I'm going to put the water right up here. And here is your brush. Now, you can't paint that one. Pick one out in here. Let me okay, give you this one to paint. I'm going to pick that one up. Okay. 
And let me show the scuba artist. All right. All right. Thank you. I have it right here to get dry. Now, let's give Allison this one, and I have one here. All right. Now mix any, use any kind of paint you like, tempera, watercolor, 